have been asked to um, answer the following questions. The first question is, when did the shift from face-to-face -face education to distance learning start? What caused it? Well, the first thing that caused it was reaching my students. I found that in a class of 40 students and more, I didn't really have a way of connecting with them individually. I would be talking to the whole class. And that kind of made me feel uncomfortable because I knew that talking to the whole class was like another person, that that person really didn't exist. So in order to talk to each one of them and connect with each one for learning, I had to find a way to, to do it. And the way that I found in 1992 was the internet. I was able to use technology to reach each one of my students by going off, well, not really offline, but out of the classroom. In other words, I could connect with them from home 24-7. It started out with emails and other means of connecting, then with Moodle, voice, audio, and then eventually to video. I found WebQuest, so I started creating WebQuest for each of my um, literature topics and other topics. I started connecting my students with other teachers from around the, the world, and that made it more exciting. In other words, I took my students out of the classroom. It started with regular weekly computer classes, it was really scary at the beginning, but the transition was really fast because the students and I worked together as partners of learning. How has rapid development of technologies influenced education approaches? What new models appeared? Well, first of all, I was transformed. I was transformed as a learner, first of all, because I was learning, learning so much. I was transformed, I would say, as a teacher because I was able to use lots of tools and my knowledge base just got larger and larger. In addition, I changed as a person. I wasn't really thinking about the content as much as how I was going to reach my students and they were going to reach each other. In other words, it became a socially engaging endeavor. They were learning socially with others around the globe. They were also getting the idea that English was more than a language of communication. It was a way to really learn about yourself and others in the process. They were very grateful to me because the English classroom became so much more. They were learning skills lifelong learning skills. They were just, they were learning how to learn. They were learning about one another. They were learning about teamwork. They were learning about developing a business. They were just learning about life and how to connect with others because I'm referring to high school kids mainly from the age of, um, I say, 15, 16 to 18. You're really learning about yourself and how, and your place in the world. They were learning about careers and and all kinds of options. So um, educational approaches, I was using experimenting and then I found the uh, approaches as a result. In other words, I wasn't learning from the literature was, was available. I was doing what I felt intuitively right. And then I found the education approaches coming. Um, I can talk about philosophical approaches, but not really education approaches, um, because I think that it's a very humanistic approach, very caring approach, and um, and these things are ongoing. I would say perhaps Piaget influenced, as I watched how they developed. Um, Vygotsky definitely had an influence. Well, at least I don't know if he had an influence on me, but I found out that his ideas uh, fit in with mine. 
Um, so Roger, Carl Rogers ideas, because I was using action research projects. So whatever I was doing, I would search in the literature and I would say, oh, that's me. All right. Um, I learned English and teaching about English, linguistics and so on through Chomsky. Okay, Chomsky was a big deal. But I only discovered lots of ideas, as I said, once I started using technology. I learned a lot about learning as a result of technology because it really does open a lot of opportunities for you. I also did my PhD fully online. Well, not really fully online. We had residencies, but I did do it because I was very, very involved with technology. So I was also a learner doing a PhD program online. So maybe that had a lot to do with my approach and so on. Is there any conflict between the formal education and the new trends? Well, definitely. My dissertation uh, was about teachers feeling very lonely because in formal education, you are very limited. I mean, the whole thing limits you, but not you as a teacher, but also limits the students because you're forced to do things a certain way and follow tests and so on. And with language learning, it's really difficult because what are we testing? And in general, what are we testing? So I uh, became too open for the environment that I was working in. I was working in a blended learning format. I still teach. I've been teaching for over 30 years. English is a foreign language. And uh, I teach other things these days. I teach Moodle around the world. And I teach about technology around the world. But if I take my small little school, uh, I would say that I'm quite a rebel. Nobody uses technology in my school. Uh, it's not used very extensively around the globe. My uh, dissertation question was, let's find out what's going on. There are a lot of teachers around the world, English language teachers, who use technology, but their universities do not approve. So actually, uh, we're talking about uh, <laughs> almost 20 years later. And uh, nothing has changed. Technology is still not accepted, even though it's used. Teachers do use technology. They use Facebook, they have Facebook, they use emails and so on. But they don't think of it as something that uh, could enhance instruction and learning. Students, similarly, uh, you know, they learn all the time, but they don't really connect. So the teachers do need to connect to make the connection between using technology, not only for entertainment and fun, but also as a tool that can broaden and together you know, teachers just a facilitator together, uh, students and teachers can learn together. But um, it doesn't seem to be happening at the rate that I would like to see it happening. OK, so formal education is really keeping things closed and technology is opening things up. So the two don't seem to go together, even though they, they could very easily go together. They have for me. All right. Um, I started using technology actually in the uh, late 80s. That's when I started using the Internet. All right. So uh, what is the future of pedagogy? Well, not enough literature is being done. I think that action research is really important. If everybody could just conduct action research teachers to see what's going on, even encourage students to do it, then maybe we might get, you know, more information more research done on what's going on and uh, as far as learning goes. A lot of theories out there, they're outdated. And a lot of young people are finding out that uh, learning is very, very personal, individual, and uh, nobody learns exactly in the same way. But I think before we talk about pedagogy, we have to talk about why, you know, what is testing? Why are we testing? What are we testing? You know, and um, and then we can talk about maybe andrology and not pedagogy because children learn in different ways and they're learning whether we like it or not. OK, we can't stop learning and formal education can't do it either. What new skills are necessary for a modern teacher educated to cope with the changes? Well, the teacher has to learn to uh, relate. I think relationship based teaching and learning is really important. We do learn together. I mean, learning alone is really useless. What are you going to do with the knowledge? And today's technology is really showing that if you're not sharing it on Facebook, Twitter and so on, then you haven't really learned anything. So actually, 
technology, and I'm talking about social networks, are allowing everyone to engage in what's called collective intelligence and learn together. We can share and learn from one another, which really says something about formal education. What is the place for formal education? You see a lot of people like Bill Gates um, and Job and others who never finished their formal education uh, because there's something, you know, counter creative, I'd say, or I don't know, it's just something wrong about it. So when you say modern teacher, um, it's any teacher. It's not really about being modern or not being modern. It's about being open, open to others. You know, I think if you're open to others, and I think that's what every teacher uh, does, okay, because you're sharing information that you know, but actually, you know, what a teacher knows is not enough. There's a lot more out there. So I would say that uh, a teacher, a modern teacher, should be able to allow learning just allowing learning let the kids learn and facilitate learn to facilitate and not take the stage in other words um, don't teach at them let them learn these are the skills letting go and allowing someone else to to do it for you. I uh, let my students teach. That's how they learn. I mean, every teacher knows that they're expert learners. And that's what we want. Our, we want to duplicate ourselves for our students. Let them. Um, so we model that. Let them teach. Allow them to do the work. You know, sometimes my administrator will, Nelly, they're doing the work. That's right. Because they're the students. They're the learners. Okay, just the fact that I'm standing there talking to them about English doesn't mean that they're learning anything. Okay, so I think it's really, really important for us to um, to learn to let go. And um, that takes practice. Okay, it takes practice. And, um, and I think that mindfulness meditation is a great way to do it. That's my secret and the Alexander Technique. So I hope I've been of help. I know I talk too much, um, but I hope you got something out of it. I'd love to hear your feedback so that we can connect. Otherwise, you know, it's again, it's talking at instead of talking with. So thank you. Thank you for um, listening.